like really fast, but then I just full throttle back into the tree. Classic. Classic. Oh, yeah. Saved it. Oh. Ooh. That was so close, man. That's probably about my closest, uh, you know, call to slamming into the ground that I've had. Gosh, these trees are fun to fly around. This is the pack we're running. So this is our setup. Sector 5, pretty much my standard Sector 5 6S setup for the past almost a year. Welcome back. So glad you could be here. We're talking about the Radio Master Zorro. Is it the best radio ever? And is it good if you like to use your pinchy fingers to fly your drone? Find out at the end of this sentence. Yes. I mean, no. Shoot. Dang it. No, it's not. It's it's not a good radio for pinchies. And this is why I'm not using it anymore. I bought it. I thought it was like, ooh, this is the radio that I need to get. This will complete me. But it's, it's not, actually. And that's because I fly with a hybrid pinchy grip, meaning I use my uh, thumb on the top of the sticks, but then I also, or one stick per thumb, you know, and then I put my first finger, like, on the front of the stick. And so that gives me some extra control, and that's just how I like to roll. Now, um, that's it. That's basically it. So if that's all you need to know, yeah, you probably shouldn't buy this if you uh, if you don't like flying with your thumbs, because you know, I mean, I guess obviously this is intended for thumbing, but um, other reviews were like, oh yeah, you know, you can use it just fine with pinchies and. You know, maybe it's my hands, maybe it's the size of my hands, I don't know what it is. But you know, there are some other things about this radio that I just don't like. And I'm gonna get into, you know, all of that and more. But first I wanna say thanks to today's sponsor, which is PCB Way. PCB Way makes custom printed circuit boards. That's what PCB stands for. And they have thousands of different components that they can assemble for you. If you send them your uh, PCB design, they can whip that baby up and they can actually assemble everything for you uh, as an extra service so that you get it ready to rock and roll when it comes to your door. Now, if you're not into PCBs, they do offer rapid prototyping services, which is really cool. So if you wanna get something, you know, get some sheet metal bent, get some CNC machined aluminum or other materials or 3D printing, or even injection molding done, you can send your files over to them and then have them do that for you in case you don't have those types of specialized equipment. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, if you wanna check them out, I'll have a link to them down in the description below this video, but let's continue on about the Radio Master Zorro. So I already did a video about the Radio Master Zorro. It was kind of like an unboxing and size comparison. And at the time I was like, yeah, this could be you know promising. And one of the reasons why I got this transmitter is because I was really getting sick of the giant form factor of the TX16S. Um, now the version I got was ELRS uh, ready or you know built in, which that doesn't really matter for this review purposes. I mean, for like my purposes, I actually didn't mean to buy that one. And I got the, I didn't pay attention and I got the wrong one. But anyway, so the, so the thing is, is that the form factor is just weird. Now you see, if we compare this to the TX12, I think the TX12 is a way better form factor because it it has almost the like the same uh, like like same size screen. It has a scroll wheel. It has pretty much all the same features as the Radio Master Zorro, but it's actually I think a much more uh, compact feeling radio and um, like a good like I would say like a kind of like a mini radio. Um, and so my big thing about the Radio Master Zorro, well the biggest thing is the switches. Like I said, the switches. I just cannot stand how the switches stick out from the from the front um, and you don't have any top switches because you could absolutely put in top switches in there and they would still be like protected because that screen sticks up. Um, and so that's just what I'm used to because I, I, you know, I grew up in this hobby flying the FlySky radios and they all have vertical switches mounted on the top. So it's like you, you know, you push you know up or away from you to turn on the drone is how i have it and then you know off is like pull towards you but when the switches are sticking out vert or uh, horizontally away from me i couldn't 
like I couldn't decide which way was should be on and which way should be off. Now, if you if you you know just practice with this radio and you just learn it using that uh, that switch orientation, that's not really a big deal. Um, but it's just like for me going from like a a normal type of radio to that. I just, I couldn't stand it. So like right now, well, I'm gonna come in to disarm, but like it's really hard, it's not natural to get my middle finger over the switch to dis, to disarm it. Like it just, I feel like I can't move my fingers like that. You know what I mean? Um, it's way better if I'm flipping the switch like towards me or away from me. And you know, you can't go taking your fingers off the sticks when you're like in the middle of flying and stuff. So um, that was the main thing. The other thing though that's weird about the design on the Zorro is how it has a, um, so for the batteries, it uses two uh, eight, 18350 batteries, I think. They're, they're like CR123 batteries, um, but they're lithium ion and they're uh, rechargeable. And it's weird because they put the batteries in the grip and a lot of people were complaining that the batteries were too small. Like they should have just made it so that you could put bigger batteries in there. But then they have this big open cavity, you know, like at the at the bottom where the the grip, uh, like basically that empty shape makes the grip of the transmitter. But like you, when you gr actually grip the transmitter, the the handles are pretty big, like it's fairly large. So your fingers don't really go in that like empty space anyway, and so you just have this weird empty space. And then they put these uh, these like molded in uh uh you know little molded pieces where you could strap a battery like an external battery like a you know lithium uh polymer battery and then plug it in and power it with a balance lead but it's like well why didn't you just like enclose that space and then put like a giant battery in there for us and then you could have like this super long runtime it just doesn't make any sense and then you have the screen at the top which would fit perfectly right in that little cavity that's basically not being used, except unless you put a battery in there, which that's just kind of awkward to have to put a battery in there and then you've got stuff dangling off of your radio. And so basically, if, if you did that, you would kind of end up with a form factor similar to the TX-12. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just weird. And it, uh, after flying this for a bit, that's what I realized. Like, yeah, it's it's just kind of an awkward shape. I think those are the main things. Those are the main points. And then in terms of when I went to install Crossfire, um, I'm not sure if it was just my model. Like, it, it may not be a related thing at all, but I had to sort of troubleshoot to get Crossfire working. Um, I think I had to update to like a new version of Crossfire uh, with the uh, the Micro TX module. Um, and I did have to get an adapter. I had to use the retrofit kit um, to turn my Crossfire Micro TX into the Micro TX, uh, basically like the light module or the, uh, you know, the L-I-T-E, uh, the smaller version basically. So I had to retrofit that just to fit it in this radio. And then I actually ended up having to retrofit it backwards and use an adapter to put it back in the TX 16 S actually. And now I've kind of been, uh, I've, I've recently been building and flying planes a little bit more. And so I realized that the TX 16 S is actually much better for that because you have a you know bigger screen and you can, you know, control more of this, more, uh, features more easily. I don't, I still don't use anywhere near, uh, that many switches, uh, on the TX 16 S. <clears throat> but you know, it's, it is definitely a much more capable radio. And I am very interested in being able to send uh, telemetry info to the screen on the TX 16 S like for long range flying. I don't do any long range flying right now, but I really would like to. And so that's a, a cool feature. Um, otherwise the TX 12, I think is really pretty great. Uh, the only problem with the TX-12 is it's, it's not multi-protocol. And really, I mean, it doesn't, you, uh, it can't do FlySky. So AFHDS or AFHDS 2A, it can't do that. Um, and that's my main reason why I don't use the TX-12 most of the time, because it is smaller and lighter and I do like the size of it. Um, but it's going to be probably like my backup radio or probably like my water radio. Uh, I think like if I'm doing, uh, if I'm flying off the water, I think I'm probably gonna 
um, use that one so that way I don't, uh, just in case something happens to to it if it gets wet. And I might try to waterproof it as well. So that'll kind of be my little uh, special use uh, radio most likely. Um, and then, you know, I still have the Fly Sky radios, but that's mostly just like, uh, mostly just for fun or for reference or if I just... I, I don't know, like, there's not really much reason that I'd have to use them now because I can use the TX-16S for for the uh, FlySky protocol. But anyway, so uh, kind of getting away from the point of the Zorro here, but the, the point is that the Zorro doesn't really uh, actually fill any, you know, necessary roles that I have for it. Um, and since I don't use my thumbs, the gaming style just doesn't really doesn't really do much for me um it's cool it's you know it's it's kind of it's kind of co cool is it cool but yeah the fact that the screen sticks out up the top and then like they don't just have a built-in battery in there like why don't you just make it run off of like one 18 or a um or a or two 18 650s or one 2700 you know lithium ion battery or something i just you know get creative with it um, but anywho, I mean, you know, you can still, it still flies. It's still the, you know, the, the gimbals seem decent. I mean, you can fly just fine. It's, it should be a good radio. If you like thumbing, uh, you can, this one has built in ELRS. So if you're into that, you can get the ELRS model. I haven't gotten into ELRS. I probably won't for a while, uh, until it kind of gets a little bit more like, uh, tested and uh, kind of simpler to set up, honestly. Um, so I haven't looked into it a whole lot. Anyway, th I think that's it. I think we covered everything there. Um, and I think, I, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching me fly and all this stuff. And I, I, I don't actually know, how am I going to edit this together? I'm not really sure. And that's what I think about the Radio Master Zorro. Thanks for watching, everybody. Leave a comment down below if you have one of those. And I will see you on the next one. Stay flying. Stay stay flying and don't, don't fly into stuff. But, you know. Anyway. All right. That's going to do it. Those are my thoughts on the Radio Master Zorro. Have a good day, everybody. And remember to crash well. Ah, see how I have to like move my whole hand? Like I have to, I have to undo my grip, my normal grip to do that. Um, I mean, I guess I could just position my, my finger up here. Anyway, let's see what happened to this guy. Um, uh, see, I haven't really like pushed myself in a long time. So it feels really good. Oh, we lost a, let me unplug this dude. There we go. All right, quad is safe. Um, yeah, we lost we lost a blighty blight. Oh, fudge, that's hot. Hole should not have touched that. All right, I'm gonna plug this back in um, so that I can undo the timer. Yeah, you shouldn't. You definitely should not try to fly uh, when you don't have a, a, a when you're missing a blade. Well, you can't see on the GoPro, but I can see the discoloration of the of the windings. I mean, shoot, man, I can actually see that on a lot of these. Maybe maybe that's not it, maybe it's something else. But no, that thing was hot, man, like hot. Other motors are warm, but you know, not bad. That one's warmer. Ooh, yeah, that, oh gosh, that was way too hot, way too hot. Anyway, um, I'm, I do like these motors. These are 2405, 18 kV motors. Um, you know, I'm not a motor connoisseur or anything, but uh so far they they i feel like they've been very good very smooth like they've been good for the type of flying that i like to do which is more kind of on the side of um more flight time and more smooth as opposed to just you know all out crazy for a short duration Can we get bars in our goggles